Hope this is hooked up and working. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Voting for Videos with Josh. So today's episode was voted on by the members in the Discord. I posted like five different ideas and they voted on it. And so we came to the conclusion that today's video is going to be junior devs versus mid-level devs versus senior level devs. Let me just say that today is July 17, 2018 and I'm now 28 years old. My entire goal was to have this Patreon up and running and all these courses on my own focus and then you know, life happened, but I still have a Patreon and I was going to announce it and make this huge like, Josh, you're a sellout, quit being a sellout, quit, quit trying to give people reasons to give you money. But anyways, I just want to mention it in case you guys want to give me some pity Patreon. <laughs> you guys know that the dream is that I want to do this full time, so I have a Patreon. If you want to support it, that would be fantastic. If not, you can't afford it. You don't want to fantastic. So I have a website I'm working on, onfocus.gg. I want it to be like this go-to place for resources and reviews of all these different free online code resources, paid online code resources, paid online code boot camps, in-person code boot camps. I just want to make like a one-stop shop and so that's what I'm currently working on but I have a lot of content to make and I'm just one guy. So today's video is going to be that long title that I said previously. How do you know if you're a junior developer? I would say if you're between the one to three year developer range your junior developer mid levels between three to five and then five plus I would say would be senior developer. So let's go back to junior developers. Junior developers typically do, I don't know, the kind of the grunt work of the jobs or they'll give you a task that they know that you can't mess up or if you do mess it up it's not that big of an impact. I would say generally that this is between like your first and second job of getting paid to code. If you're doing an internship or something like that, you're still probably a junior. How do you know when you've moved from junior to mid-level? So mid-level is this weird area because you can become mid-level with a certain company's technology stack. That's kind of what happened to me at my last job. I became mid-level at that specific stack, but when I went to apply to other jobs after that job was like, goodbye, I was like a junior with all these other different stacks, but I had experience doing web development. And so that's kind of this weird place you can fall into. Like, you might be a senior developer with React and JavaScript, but with PHP and Laravel, you might be a junior. But does that average out to make you a mid-level developer? What happens if you're a mid-level developer and you're like mid-level at React and JavaScript, but a junior at like Ruby and Ruby on Rails? Then are you junior or are you mid-level? Like where does that put you in that ratio? So that's kind of this weird place you can be in. You, you want to just keep a job for a few years and try to make it out, out of that kind of rut of mid-level developer. You want enough knowledge to come full circle to be able to say that, you know, yes, I can do this relatively good in every single language, which takes some time to do. There's no doubt about that. It takes some time. Um, but getting your foot in the door in the beginning just as a junior developer is also difficult. And especially because junior developer jobs are like come and go. People hire junior developers for freelance, for short contract terms or because there's a contract and they don't want to pay the money or take their senior devs off of it. So junior devs, depending on the size of the company, come and go. You just want to try and get your foot in the door and stay at a company long enough to get become like almost expert or expert at one thing. So you can pretty much average yourself out to being mid-level in almost everything else. So what defines a mid-level developer? A mid-level developer can usually take something from start to finish and, and complete it. Now a junior developer can take something from start to finish, but there's gonna be a whole bunch of questions, ups and downs, and probably bugs that they've caused and bugs that they fixed along the way. A senior developer can take that from start to finish and then optimize it along with coding it so it's not spaghetti code at the end. Let's talk about like what they make real quick. So junior level developers, I would say between 45 to 60,000, you can get up to 80 you're really good. Mid-level I would say between 65 and 85 and then senior level developers are probably like 85 all the way up to like CTO which could be 85 to like 120, 125. I think that's pretty normal. CTOs normally get like 150 or 250 depending on the size of the company. But senior level developers again this depends on what technology stack that you're in. Like are you an expert or are you okay at it? Have you been doing this one stack for eight years straight and that's the only job you've had? Then yeah, you're probably senior at that. Are, are you, have you been doing one technology for eight years straight and then on the side you've been doing something kind of junior? I don't know. It's really hard to define these titles 
There's this phrase, right? There's this meme online, there's this phrase that says, uh, a junior level developer says, I found the bug. And a senior level developer says, I found a bug. Right, so that's the difference between junior and senior in a nutshell. Mid-level is this weird place that I already talked about. I wouldn't let a title define you, and I wouldn't let a number of years define you. Everyone has the same amount of hours in a day, but there are people out there working more than eight hours or have two jobs, such as myself. I've had two jobs since I've started this path. I've, I keep two jobs. I'm, if I'm not working at work, then I'm working somewhere else, doing something else. And I try to... You know, double my experience as fast as I can. I want to know everything that I can, but don't let a title or years in the industry define you, especially because the framework is always changing. Like, so some guy is, knows a lot about React framework. Let's say React just disappears tomorrow. I know very unlikely, probably won't happen, but let's just say React disappears tomorrow. Now everyone has to learn the new thing that's hot. Suddenly he has a, hopefully a, a really good base knowledge of JavaScript, but he has no idea about the framework. Maybe it's easier for him to pick up, maybe not. But when you start off, the only thing that's limiting you is your base understanding, which I think that you can grasp fairly quickly. And then you'd be neck and neck on whatever framework that you're using. Now being in the industry and having the soft skills also defines you as a senior developer. You might have like you know teamwork skills, ability to manage projects better, ability to foresee bottlenecks in certain tasks that the product manager might give you be like we need this for the customers we promised it and you're like well we can give you this but we can't give you this you know take your pick like but you're able to see that like two months away from that actually happening I'd say a junior level developer would, would come up to it and be like well I mean my bad I didn't know that I couldn't get it all done at the same time mid-level I, I just keep avoiding mid-level because it's such a weird place to be in besides pay structure it's such a weird place like you have to convince whoever you're applying to that you can learn what they want you to learn or unless you just like match I was gonna say curriculum unless you like match their skill set exactly like what they're looking for you're almost junior in every aspect you're it's just it comes down to your ability to learn whatever they want you to learn or their stack however they want you to learn it as fast as you can and so it's just this I don't know it's just a weird place try to avoid it become an expert at something so that you can average that out to be a mid-level with whatever technology that you want as far as resume goes they're gonna say you know, entry level position, one year, or, you know, entry level position, three years experience. It's like, what? That's like, ignore it, just apply anyways. Eight years experience, ignore it, just apply anyways. Chances, you know, they probably will reject you like they did to me. Oh, let's back up. Let me give you a little bit of an update on what happened when I applied to those jobs. I got one response that said, hey, we're interested, please fill out this questionnaire. I have not filled out that questionnaire yet. I had two other ones that were declined. I responded to one of them and I said, can you please tell me why you rejected me? I'd like to turn this into a learning opportunity and improve myself in the future. God, did that look really scripted? Because I was like reading that from a script in my head. I was just staring into space there. That's kind of the update on where that is. And uh, I, don't know, I applied to like nine jobs, I think. I put seven in the thumbnail, but I actually applied to like nine and only three of them have actually responded. So one, do this test, two, no. Got a bunch more to wait on. So that's where I'm at with that. I know this video is kind of jumbled. Anyways guys, I hope this has kind of like shined some light on the different segments of the sector, right? So you got junior, mid, senior, CTO, manager, product manager. You can move into like all these different places. It just depends on what you want to do. I myself more like the business side of things. I like running projects and managing stuff and figuring out bottlenecks and the best way to tackle stuff. So I, I would see myself moving more towards business and Elon Musk. That's the goal, right? He's like number one human. I guess that's it guys. Like I, I I wish I had more of a concrete Answer for like the difference between them, but there's just like this weird gray area between the different levels of Development and it's gonna shine through when they give you the code test either They can tell you've been doing it for a while and you have some idea or they you have no idea Basically, I would say don't let a title define you don't let a number of years define you Just keep working and do your best work and have a goal that you want to move into. Some people want to move into more technical roles. Some people want to move into more management roles. It's, it's an open road. I will say that product managers that have done code are usually better product managers. It's, you give a project to somebody and you tell them to manage it, they've never done code in their life, it's going to be more difficult. But if you have done code, you're going to be like, yeah, I've seen bugs like that. Or actually, have you tried approaching it this way? Or you might actually be able to solve the bug, even if that's not what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. 
But anyways, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. If you liked it, click that little subscribe button. Have a Discord, join the Discord. I will say hello to you at tag. Call me out if I don't. And again, it's my birthday and I have a Patreon, so obviously I'm selling out. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I'll see you in the next video.